introduction to our sight words this morning. Now, I will be recording a video today to practice these new sight words, and I just want you to watch that video and practice along with us. Now, before we get too far into today, we know we are learning all about letter K. Now, I wanna show you something, even before we come up with our K words, I wanna show you something. This is a fancy K. So I want you to take a look at fancy K. Look at that fancy K. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Now I want to show you fancy K because if you see fancy K in a book or somewhere where you're reading something, I want you to know that is letter K. Look how loop-dee it is. Look at it. When you write it, you go down and then you make a loop and come out like that. That is fancy K. We write stick K right now, but it's okay if you want to do a little practice with fancy K today as well. And we know K says K, but we also know that C says K as well. And so some words start like K, but actually begin with C. So we're thinking about these K words. I'm going to bring our K our K words over here this morning. Now we have got some K words already, a good start over here. We've got our friend K-O, we've got Kite, we've got King. All right, we wanna add some more K words. I'm going to call on my friend Mahialani. Mahialani, unmute and tell me your K word, honey. That is a beautiful word. Boys and girls, let's clap out kangaroo. Here we go. Kangaroo. Let's count the syllables. Here we go. Ready? Kangaroo. Three syllables in that word. Now we want to make sure we write all three syllables. So I'm going to start with my letter K and then all of you are going to help me spell. Thumbs up if you can help me spell. Yes, Mrs. Lai, I can help you spell kangaroo. Beautiful. So I'm going to write my lowercase K because kangaroo isn't a fancy word. All right, but listen to this. Let's get our hands up. Let's say it nice and slow. Here we go. So everybody, we're not gonna, we're, I'm not gonna call on anybody right now. So if you're raising your hand, put it down. Get your hand up just like this so you can sound out the word. Here we go, ready? K, do you hear that long A sound? I hear the long A sound. I'm gonna write an A. All right, here we go. K, there's actually an N. 
Gahenga. G, G, is literally G, G. What's that letter? G. And then there's an A. This is Kanga. Now we need to write the last syllable, Ru. I hear the R. R, U, U. I hear U. And U is double O. K-A-N-G-A-R-O-O, -O, kangaroo. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw my kangaroo. Now we learned yesterday that kangaroos have very strong tails because they actually help their feet when they are moving. So kangaroos have very strong tails. So there's my kangaroo. I sketched it pretty quick there. I'm gonna call on my next friend and make sure you stay muted until I call your name because otherwise we get some reverberation over here. So I'm gonna call on Erin. Erin, go ahead and unmute yourself. Give us your K word. Peace. Say it one more time, honey. Peace. Keys, excellent. Just like our K picture right there. All right, so boys and girls, everyone can tell me what's the first letter in key. Everyone tell me. Mrs. Lai, write the letter. I love it, Ava's making one. She's making one with her fingers. Oh, it's very creative, Ava. She's making a K. All right, so we're gonna write keys and Erin definitely added the S on the end, right, Erin? So here we go, let's sound it out. K, 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 key, E. Do you hear the long E sound? Key. And there's a silent Y, K-E-Y. Now I'm gonna add my last sound, keys. Miriam, we're actually working right now, honey, so you're just gonna put that down so you can participate, okay? Keys. I hear the S on the end. And that means I need to draw a picture that has more than one key in it. So here I go. There's one key, but I need more keys. There it is. All right, Mrs. Light did her best. I did my best keys right there. All right, so we are gonna add one more K word for today. Just one more K word and the rest of them, we're gonna keep them in our smart brains for tomorrow. I'm going to call on my friend, Brandon Ace. Brandon Ace, go ahead and unmute yourself, Brandon Ace. Catagon. What is? What does that mean? I'm not even sure what that word is. Cat so, are you talking about cat, cat like a kitty cat? Mm -hmm. This is a gun that's, that, that, that goes with a cat. Oh, cap, cap. Can I tell you what? I think that might be a letter C word. I think it might be a letter C word because I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So I'm not gonna add it right now because I think it starts, if it's cap, cap starts with the letter C, it's a C word. So let's think of a different one. Okay, Brandon, do you have maybe a different one or do you wanna take a break and think about it? Okay, that's fine. All right, let me call on Skylar. Skylar, unmute yourself. Give us your K word. Can I see the Um, yes. I stuck it down here. All right, so we've got lots of these words on our list already. Um, we don't have this word. Can you see what that word says? K -k -k -k. Kiss. Kiss. Yeah, would you like to add kiss? No? Okay, you wanna add a different word. All right, so look what George is doing with the ball. 
Yeah, would you like to add that word? Yeah. Okay, so Skylar, tell me the first letter of the word kick. Okay. You got it. All right, here we go. So I've got my K, and this is a really great word because it has something at the end of it that we need to talk about. So great word, Skylar. All right, everybody, get your hand up. We're gonna spell kick, like kick the ball. Here we go, ready? K-I-I-Glue, I hear a short vowel I. Now let's sound out the, to the end. Kick, k -k. Do you hear there's another K sound? But that's when we have a C and a K together. That's when we have a C and a K, but it says the K sound one time. So here I go, here I go. I'm gonna draw a kick the ball picture and K-I-C-K kick. And we're kicking the ball and there's my ball. All right, boys and girls. Now we have lots of other space, but we're gonna hold off for just a little bit. We'll add some more tomorrow. So keep it in your smart brain, okay? Keep it in your smart brain. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about this special amphibian we are learning about this week. And an amphibian is an animal that goes through a metamorphosis we learned that special word yesterday when we were listening to Deb from Sulphur Creek. Metamorphosis is change. And this book is called From Tadpole to Frog. And there's the tadpole. The tadpole looks and acts like a fish. Pretty amazing stuff. From tadpole to frog. From tadpole to frog by Kathleen Widener Zofeld. In the spring, you may see frog eggs in ponds. So frog eggs are soft and squishy and they look like this. We're gonna put our hands down for now, boys and girls, so we can hear this story and this life cycle of a frog. So we know that this frog really likes to be wet. It likes its skin to be wet, so it lives where it's wet and it lays eggs in a pond and if you watched the frog video yesterday, you saw how soft and squishy these frog eggs can be. Each egg looks like a ball of clear jelly with a dark center. A clump of frog eggs is called frog spawn. So this is in water and these are clumps of frog eggs just like this. Big clumps of frog eggs. Pretty amazing stuff. Inside the eggs, tiny tadpoles are growing. So even inside the egg, you can see that there starts to become a change and you can start to see the formation of the little tadpole inside the egg. At first, they look like small dark specks. In a few days, a little head and tail take shape some of the tadpoles wiggle out of their eggs. So some of these tadpoles, they wiggle, 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 wiggle right out of their eggs. And remember what, what we were taught yesterday? How does a tadpole get out of its egg? It has to eat its way out of the egg. That's right. And actually the eggshell gives that tadpole really good nutrition to help it grow. So it eats its way out and then it can grow and grow and grow. Gills on the outside of the tadpole's body help it breathe underwater. So it's breathing underwater just like a fish. After eating the jelly of its egg, the tadpole has grown. So that tadpole grows. And we know, just like we learned yesterday, the tadpole has to eat and then grow. And what's it gonna do? Eat and then grow. Eat and grow, that's its job. 
The tadpole's strong tail helps it swim. So the tadpole is learning to swim with its strong tail. Tadpoles eat until they are big. They do not look like frogs yet. Doesn't look like a frog yet. Soon the tadpole has grown hind legs and hind legs are the back legs, the strong back jumping legs. And the tadpole's gills have moved inside its body. So it starts to change, but it's not a frog yet. Lungs are beginning to form inside the tadpole's body too. Now and then it puts its head above the water to take a breath. As the tadpole's lungs grow stronger, its gills shrink away. Two front legs grow where its gills once were. So now the frog has back legs and front legs, still has a long tail though, not quite a frog yet. Soon the tadpole's mouth has become wider. The tadpole starts to eat small bugs when it is hungry. Look at that, but we still see there's a tail there. Not quite a frog yet, but getting closer. For a few more weeks, the tadpole's tail shrinks. Now the tadpole's strong legs and webbed feet help it swim. So webbed feet means you have fingers. This is very similar to the tadpole's feet, except it has skin in between its fingers. So there's skin, 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 and that helps it push the water as it swims. Pretty amazing that its body is made for swimming. The tadpole has changed into a small frog. The frog spends some of its time on land and some in the water. The little frog catches bugs and worms in its wide mouth. After a few years, the frog is fully grown. So that is quite a change. Every spring there will be new frog eggs in the pond, new frog eggs, and we have to make sure we take care of our frogs. There is um, a global problem where frogs are dying off. So scientists are trying to work to save the frogs, but there's something that's making the frogs die all over the world. So that's something that we really need to focus on, saving frogs so that they don't go extinct. So that's pretty big stuff that's going on there, boys and girls. All right, we're gonna switch gears again. We're gonna do something different again. I want everybody to go ahead and pull out their California Studies Weekly Jobs at School. So last week, we started learning about different jobs people have. People go to work, they make money to buy things, and you were even had a chance to write about what you think you would like to be when you grow up, and I loved reading all your responses. So now we're gonna learn about the different jobs that are around our school. And hopefully some of you at least are gonna get to see pretty soon different people that work at our school. Brandon Ace, what's going on over there, buddy? Um, how do frogs change one, one day tadpoles? How do frogs change? Very slowly. How do, you, how do frogs change their color when they're big? change their color. Interesting. Okay, so now you're asking a pretty big question. Let me see if I can find some more information. You mean why are some frogs green but some frogs are red or some frogs are blue? Is that what you're wondering, Brandon? We can look into that a little bit more, okay? We'll look into that a little bit more. That's pretty interesting stuff. All right, let's go ahead and pull this out because we see a school right here. And it says, there are many jobs people do at school. Some people work in the office. They can also work in the cafeteria. Some people work outside. So there's lots of people even at school right now that are doing jobs. So let's see if we can find out a little bit more. 
jobs at school. So let's take a look at this first one right here. The principal is the leader of our school. They make rules for us to follow. The rules help keep us safe. And we have a principal at our school. And I think lots of you know our principal's name, Mrs. Ditto. She is our principal, the leader of our school. The school secretary works in the office. Their job is to help the principal, teachers, and students. They type letters and answer phones. And we have a secretary in our office and her name is Miss Ruth. You might have even seen her if you've come to school. And it says a reading teacher is someone who helps us learn. Sometimes we need help learning letters and sounds. This helps us read words. So some schools have a special reading teacher. We don't right now. That's why Mrs. Lai teaches everyone to read. All right, and our school custodians take care of the building. Their job is to clean the classroom and the cafeteria, but the, our custodian also cleans our playground and helps keep our playground and the front of our school clean and safe. And one day soon, hopefully you'll get to meet Mr. Jesus. He is our very hardworking school custodian. Crossing guards work outside the school. They help you walk across the street. They help you before and after school. Their job is to keep children safe. And we do have a crossing guard when school is in session that helps kids cross the street right in front of Birch Grove School. A groundskeeper takes care of the land around a school. Their job is to cut the grass, bushes, and trees. They also pick up trash. And we have a groundskeeper that comes to Birch Grove School every week or two to clean up. And there are many jobs. Oh, a really important one right here. Students have an important job. You are a student. What is your job? What is your job as a student? Avery, go ahead and help us. What's your job as a student? Your job as a student is to learn, that's all right, to come to school every day, to do your best, to listen to your teacher, listen to your principal, have fun, make friends, all those important things we do at school every day. Miriam, what's your job as a student? To raise your hand. Raise your hand? Yeah, sometimes we raise our hand. Yeah, listen to the teacher, raise your hand, think, talk, participate, that's right. Like I'd love to see David's eyes over here right now. So whatever you're playing with David, put it aside. Now literally put it away right now so you can participate, honey. All right, so we do, we all have jobs. There are many jobs people do at school. Some are indoors and some are outdoors. How do people work together to take care of your school? Well, that's not really something we get to see right now, but like I said, hopefully pretty soon. Morgan, we're at school right now, and remember, um, KO, can we put all that stuff down, buddy? So Langston's here, all right. So Morgan, we're at school right now, and we're looking right over here, buddy. Okay, we've got this page out. Do you have this page right now, Morgan? All right, so we're gonna work on the back side of it. So everybody flip it to the back side right there. And we're gonna take a look. We're gonna write our name on the top, first name, last name. First name, last name. And it says, circle the pictures that show people working at school. So let's see if all of these people work at our school or work at a school. Does a crossing guard work at a school? You bet, circle the crossing guard. A crossing guard works at a school. Does a teacher work at a school? Absolutely, lots of teachers work at a school. There's lots and lots of teachers at a school. How about the custodian? Does the custodian work at the school? 
Yes, the custodian helps keep our school nice and clean. You bet. What about the groundskeeper? Does the groundskeeper, uh, no, that's not a groundskeeper, is it? Hard to see what that is. It looks like somebody fixing a motor. I'm not sure that that's really a school thing right there. So I'm gonna cross that out. Not sure that that's a school thing. How about a firefighter? Does a firefighter work at a school? No, they don't work at a school. They might come visit us and teach us how to stay safe but they don't work at the school. So I'm gonna cross that guy out. And here at the bottom, it says follow the directions as your teacher reads. So listen carefully. Draw a ball in front of the slide. So I'm gonna look at the slide and I'm gonna draw a ball in front. So here I go. There's a ball in front of the slide. There we go. Draw a child on the left of the swings. So this is the right side. This is the left side over here. I'm gonna draw a child on the left side of the swings. There I go. All right. And it says draw a tree near the bicycle. So close to the bicycle, we're gonna add a tree. So I have some colors here. You can use colors or use your pencil if you want. I'm adding a tree right over here by the bicycle. we go and if you're done adding those details you can take a moment to color your picture we're gonna be done with this pretty quickly but let's just review what I did I drew a ball at the bottom of the slide I drew a child on the left side of the playground and I added a tree next to the child on the bicycle All right, boys and girls, we aren't gonna take too much more time on this. Can you come back to this later if you wanna color more? You definitely can. I'm gonna slide that away though and I want you to go ahead and pull out your sight word packet. Go ahead and pull out that sight word packet right there. All right, and I'm gonna turn to, I'm going to turn to my next word, and this is a word we've been practicing with Jack Hartman in the morning. T-H-E-R-E, -E, there. Let's say it together. T-H-E-R-E, -E, there. And I'll go ahead and practice writing my name on the top. Just a second, Sasha. I'm gonna practice writing my name right here. So first name and last name and make sure you're ready to write. You have your highlighter. Yes, Sasha. I need a bathroom break. Well, Sasha, you don't even have to ask me, honey. You just go real quick and come right back, okay? Yeah, you don't even have to ask me, just go. All right, boys and girls. As soon as we are here, we are going to go ahead and start writing. Write with me. Don't forget to talk along with me. Remember, you want to see it, say it, and hear it all at the same time. So here we go. Ready? T-H-E-R-E. -E. There. Let's do it again. Ready? T-H-E-R-E. E, R, E, there. All right, one more time, here we go. T, H, E, R, E, there. And I'm gonna put my marker away. I'm gonna take out my highlighter, my highlighter. 
And when I find T-H-E-R-E, -E, I'm going to color it. So boys and girls, we're coloring and then reading. Don't go down and color all of them. Let's read it together. Ready? There. Stop and color there. Just the first there. Don't color all the theirs. We'll do that part together. All right. Let's read it. Here we go. There is the tent. Go down to the next sentence. Stop and color there. Here we go. All right, let's read it. Ready? There is the flashlight. Let's go down to the next sentence. Stop and color there. Ready? There is the sleeping bag. Let's go down to the next sentence. Here we go. Arjun, are you okay, buddy? I can't find the page. All right. So Arjun, it's, uh, it, you, do you have your packet with you? You can't find the page or you can't find the packet? I can't find the packet. Ah, so Arjun, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. You didn't turn it in, so it's somewhere. So just don't give up. Um, don't give up looking okay. for it, okay? All right, boys and girls, we're on the lantern sentence. Stop and color there. Here we go. All right, let's read it. Ready? There is the lantern. All right. Next sentence. Stop and color there. Ready? There is the fire. Next sentence. Stop and color there. Ready? Read it with me. Ready? There is the marshmallow. And down to your last sentence. Here we go. Stop and color there. Let's read it together. Ready? There is the s'more. So they made a s'more together. All right, we're gonna go down. Sorry, we're gonna go back up to the top. We're going to read it together. David, are you okay, honey? David? David, are you okay, buddy? We're gonna read now, okay? So put your finger under the first word and read it with me, ready? There is the tent. There is the flashlight. We're reading, David. Use your reading finger. There is the sleeping bag. There is the fire. There is the marshmallow. There is the s'more. All right, now it's time for everybody to read it by themselves, okay? So I want you to go back up to the top. I want you to read it by yourself. I see you, Arjun. Yes, Arjun. You, 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 you missed a lantern sentence. I did. I'm looking at lots of things right now. Okay, Arjun. Thank you, honey. All right, here we go. Ready? There is the tent. There is the flashlight. There is the sleeping bag. There is the lantern. There is the fire. There is the marshmallow. There is the s'more. Boys and girls, I didn't even stop to color. I was watching too many things. So that was three times. We read it three times right there. I think so. I think we read it three times. <laughs> I'm gonna color that three times. I'm watching too many things because I see some kids, it seems like maybe don't have their packet. David, I know you found your highlighter, honey. I want you to put it in a nice safe spot, okay? Great job, keep it nice and safe. I'm gonna slide that packet away, but I'm gonna keep it safe because I'm gonna use it tomorrow. 
and I'm gonna bring out my writing packet right now. And everybody go make sure you have your writing packet. Hold on just a second, Ava. We are going to make sure that we are writing today. I saw lots of really amazing work last week and our work this week is going to be similar. Yes, Ava, go ahead and unmute. Honey, what's going on? Uh-oh, now Ava's frozen. Okay, Ava. All right. Oh. Okay. All right, boys and girls. So here we go. We're going to get started. We're going to hold on for just a second. I'm not going to have kids talking right now because I need to get the whole class started on our writing right now. So stretch the thumbs up if you have your writing packet. Do you have it? Okay. Good work. She's saying yes. Perfect. So this week, we are writing a story about a frog. So we are learning about frogs. We are going to write a story about frogs. Okay, so listen very carefully. Last week, we started a story with a good story starter. We started our story with one day we're going to do the same thing again this week. And I know some of you just wrote and wrote and wrote last week and that was beautiful. So that's what we're going to work on this week, writing a good story. Mahilani, thumbs up if you have your writing packet, honey. Do you have it? You do, beautiful work. All right, so we are going to make sure we are starting our story with a good story starter your job is to be creative. You can write a story about what a frog would really do in the wild, or you could totally make up a story, any story that you want. This is your story that you're going to be coming up with to tell. First things first, let's go ahead and write our name on the top. And we can add the date. The date today is 3-9-21, March 9th, 2021, 3-9-21. All right, and we're gonna still, we're not gonna stop and talk right now. We are going to add some, some beginning words to our first sentence. So we're going to write one day and then tell the story of what is happening with a frog one day. Now you can even add details in this story. So some of you are gonna want to say one sunny day or maybe one snowy day or one rainy day. You can decide how descriptive you would like to be, but we are going to start off with sight word number one because this is literally like number one, one, one spacers day. And I have to make sure that my first letter of every sentence is a capital. Some of us, we've been writing so much and we've sort of been forgetting to capitalize the first letter of our sentence. So make sure that the first letter is capital. So one, day, one day, a frog, I put spacers between all my words, one day a frog, and then you are going to tell me what the frog is doing. So maybe you're gonna write something like, no, we're, we're gonna wait, we're not even gonna stop and interrupt right now, we're just gonna wait for a moment. All right, because I have to get everybody started on their writing, okay? So one day a frog, and then you're going to tell me what your frog is doing. So you might say one day a frog went to the park to play with his friends, or one day a frog decided to have a party, or one day a frog was hanging out on his lily pad. 
You can decide what your frog is gonna do, but that's what you're going to do right now. You're gonna think about your frog. You're gonna think about your frog and what is your frog doing? All right, that's what we're thinking about right now. What is your frog doing? All right, so Miriam, are you having some technical difficulties over there? What's going on, Miriam? I have to leave for this pie, now I have to go to the doctor. Oh, no problem, honey. You know how to get started, so that's fine. I'll see you at math time, okay? Okay, bye everyone. All right, and Sasha, yes, Sasha. How do you spell million? Ooh, I still want you to sound it out. I'm not gonna spell it for you because I want you thinking about and writing the sounds in the word, okay? That is the most important thing for you to do is to hear the sounds in word. It looks good, Sasha. So long as you know what you're writing and you know what it says, that's the most important thing. That's perfect. Uh, yes, Samira. Sweetie, you're still muted. So Mrs. Light, my highlighter is not working anymore. I need a new highlighter. Okay, so Samir, I'm not totally sure if I have one for you, but don't worry because your yellow marker will work perfectly or your pink marker will work perfectly. Yellow and pink. I don't have a pink one. I have a pink Sharpie, but I have this yellow marker. I, it'll be perfect. It'll work just almost exactly the and same. My second thing was is rainy spelling R A I N Y. You did great. Sounds perfect. All right. Yes, our June. Can I read you my sentence? Of course. One day, one sunny day, a frog was eating bugs. Perfect. And those of you that have finished writing your first sentence, you have options. You can either start on your picture, start on your illustration, or you can add another detail sentence because that's what we're going to be doing this week is adding detail sentences to our writing. So I'm going to want to know more about what your frog is doing, all right? So David, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself? Tell me what your, what your sentence is, buddy. One day, a frog went to his friend. Okay, sounds good. Did you sound out all those words already? Perfect. So, David, did you put a period at the end of your sentence? All right, and David, I'm going to ask you one more question. How many times do you write your first sentence? Um, one time. That's right, David. So your next sentence is gonna tell me even more about your story, okay? So don't write the same sentence again. Tell me more about your story. We're actually gonna finish up right here. So boys and girls, this is going to be the end